test your luck. Mission begins in 10 seconds. Get ready. Ready? Go! Game! Heaven or hell? Level 2. Let's rock. Killing spree. Un friggin' believable. The car has almost reached the final terminus. You're all that remains. Finish the mission. When you enter an arcade, you'll quickly realize that the word sensory overload is not in the vocabulary. Arcades are packed with people, flashing lights, and noise of every kind. Aliens dying, music blaring, explosions exploding. It can be a lot to take in, but if you listen closely, you'll hear something that cuts through the cacophony. A voice, a human voice. More adult than your fellow arcade patrons, and a little more epic too. Cyrax wins fatality. The game announcer is calling your name. Before you're able to start playing, you're gonna have to decide which cabinet is gonna get your attention, and more importantly, your money. Any game not in use will have insert coin flashing on the screen, often accompanied by a sound like this or a voice like this. Let's go crazy! What you might not realize is that these games are conditioning you to listen for these sounds to let you know that the game is available to play. This is called attract mode, which can be likened to a PC throwing up a screensaver after you've walked away for a few minutes. Attract mode can take a number of different forms, a montage of gameplay, a scrolling list of high scores, or animated cutscenes designed to draw you in. The goal of attract mode is obviously to get you to walk over and try the game out. What started as 8-bit chimes and sound effects to grab your attention slowly became more sophisticated as arcade technology got better. So while attract mode might have looked like this in the 1970s and early 80s, by the end of the 80s, arcades began to look and sound more like this. Crazy Taxi! Yeah, 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 yeah. The first game to utilize a proper in-game announcer, however, was Dragon's Lair in 1983, when Idol, the game featured the voice of Michael Rye, a professional voice actor, who pitched the game to prospective players. The fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. Up until this point, human voices in video games were absent or horribly distorted. The sound of a real human talking from the machine was sort of a shock when the game first came out and attracted tons of attention to the new cabinet, as well as some other things that attracted new players. But the trend was set, and as technological capabilities continued to trend upwards, more and more games began including a human announcer. Let's look at fighting games as a perfect example. When you pull up to the arcade, the sounds of punches, kicks, and fireballs are sure to fill your ears. But what you're listening for isn't necessarily the sound of ongoing games, but rather the sound of games that have just ended. After all, you're here to play Street Fighter, not watch other people play Street Fighter. So when you hear that voice start counting down from nine, eight, seven, eight. you better bust your ass over to the cabinet and put your quarter down before someone else snags the spot. In this way, the announcer acts as a salesman. Think of it as a limited time offer. Buy it now, or it might be gone. For this reason, the announcer is a great way for video game companies to ensure that there's always someone inserting their coins into the machine. So even if you're across the room, you'll be able to identify when it's your turn to fight that Sagat player that no one can ever seem to beat. But the announcer isn't just there to let you know that a vacancy has opened up on your favorite machine. They're also there to draw you into trying something new. Imagine you're a little kid wandering through the aisles. You've got a pocket full of quarters, but you're barely able to see the screens because there are rows of teenagers blocking the way. Suddenly, you hear a voice blasting from a nearby cabinet. And although you can't see what's happening on the screen, the announcer's unbridled hype has you utterly gripped. As a 12-year-old hopped up on Mountain Dew and Sour Keys, the sound of Killer Instinct's Chris Sutherland going ballistic every three seconds would have been more than enough to convince me to wait as long as it took to play the game. It's the same as Steve Ritchie's Finish Him in Mortal Kombat. Fatality. When you hear that voice line on the machine next to you, you're contractually obligated to look over from your own game to watch Johnny Cage literally break a man in half. 
And then, when you inevitably lose your spot on the cabinet because you weren't paying attention, no sweat, because now you can line up to try Mortal Kombat for yourself. The video game announcer was as good a salesperson as you could ask for. And as games migrated from arcade cabinets to home consoles, the announcer carried over. When you booted up a game on your Xbox, PlayStation, Dreamcast, or N64, the game would usually rip through an intro cinematic before the game's title would be proudly announced through your CRT stereo speakers. Take Smash Melee as an iconic example. After one of the dopest opening montages in all of gaming, Dean Harrington's voice comes blaring over the intro music and sears the game's title into your head. Can you hear the music? See the stampede of Yoshis? If not, I guarantee you can hear the voice line. This iconic voice then narrates everything in the game as well. From game modes to character selection, to starting matches, and calling you a failure. When you lose at a minigame, every moment not spent beating up your little brother is permeated by this disembodied voice. So much so that they're a part of the game's canon as much as the Nintendo characters that comprise the roster. Nintendo was so proud of the voice lines that you can even go into the options and listen to each one individually. Ganondorf. It's pretty cool. But consoles weren't the only thing that people were playing on. And as PC gaming became more prevalent, a new genre was emerging as Top Dog, the first-person shooter. In the late 90s and early 2000s, games like Quake and Unreal Tournament were some of the biggest in the world, and some of that success was due to the game's announcers. On top of the blood and gore of blowing up an opponent with a rocket launcher, the game would also make you feel like an epic badass by listing off your accolades in real time. Double kill, multi kill, ultra kill, monster kill. Wiping a room full of enemies is one thing, but hearing someone congratulate you on it makes it so much more rewarding. Crossfire is a great example of this, and although today, the gameplay looks like it's being run on a potato, killing someone still feels pretty awesome. But when it comes to in-game FPS announcers, there's one that just stands above the rest. Does Jeff Steitzer even need an introduction? Probably gonna end up being best known for the work I did on a game called Halo. Double kill, triple kill, on freaking believable. Halo is a household name for many reasons. The timeless campaign, the groundbreaking multiplayer, the endless possibilities afforded by Forge and Theater Mode. But underpinning almost everything in the game is this ethereal, omnipresent voice that follows your every move. Apart from being blessed with silken vocal cords, Halo's announcer does more than just excite players throughout the game. He's an integral part of the gameplay. You see, in FPS titles, the information you have is limited to whatever is in your field of view, your minimap, and your comms if you're playing with teammates. Unlike in fighting games, where all the relevant information is right there on the screen, FPS modes like Capture the Flag and Oddball require that you move around the map, making it impossible for you to always have your eyes on the objective. Therefore, having a voice in your ear telling you lets you know that the objective needs attending to. So other than getting excited when you score a Killionaire, or telling you that you're un friggin believable The announcer also keeps you up to date with what's happening in the game. And that has spread to pretty much every genre. Think about League of Legends. Five minutes into CSing bot lane, you hear the voice line that all teammates dread. Enemy killing spree. Without having to actually watch your teammate being farmed in top lane, the announcer has graciously let you know that it's time to start flaming in all chat and intentionally feeding. Or what about TF2? The administrator is a constant stream of relevant information for you. Alert! The center control point is being captured. You didn't kill any of them. Just imagine StarCraft without... Not enough minerals. You have not enough minerals. More minerals. Or Modern Warfare 2 without... Enemy AC ones on your So, the game announcer has been used as a salesperson, a battlefield commander, and a virtual pat on the back. But there's one genre where the announcer is pretty much the only voice you ever hear. Sports games. In the early days, announcers like in NBA Jam and NHL Hits were loosely based on real sports casting, focused on making the game feel more exciting and a little bit sillier. Nowadays, when you boot up NBA 2K, Madden, MLB The Show, or UFC, it's almost like watching a live broadcast. 
Heck, Twitch streamers sometimes illegally restream MMA fights and pretend that they're playing the game. The reason they can get away with this? Games have become so immersive that it's hard to tell reality and fiction apart. Much of this is due to the fact that games use real-world announcers. For example, NBA 2K has brought in everyone from Greg Anthony to Chris Webber to the legendary Doris Burke to be a part of the virtual broadcast team. The result? A broadcast almost identical to real life. Plus, as of last year, each stadium has included their own PA announcers to add to the realism. In FIFA, Martin Tyler and Alan Smith help bring Wembley Stadium to life, and Al Murdoch, the real-life PA announcer for the Vancouver Canucks, has voiced games from Fight Night to NBA Live to NHL Hits to Need for Speed. The voices in sports games help to create an atmosphere that puts the player front and center in whatever they're playing. Whether it's the World Cup, the Stanley Cup Championship, or a UFC title fight, the game announcer realistically portraying everything that's happening makes these games feel real. And for kids and adults alike, few things come close to winning a championship with your favorite team. Announcers have become so pervasive in video games that people are actually willing to spend money to buy a new voiceover. Multiverses has all of the in-game characters available as announcers, so you can pick anyone from Jake the Dog to Garnet to Taz to narrate the game. Smite and Awesome Knots also let you pay a little bit of money to have someone new talking during games. But the game that has taken the announcer to another level is Dota 2. Dota has 30 different announcers to choose from, featuring voices from all sorts of different places. You can pick Dota characters like Axe, Bristleback, or Crystal Maiden to announce the game. You can get iconic game voices like GLaDOS from Portal, the narrator from Stanley Parable, or the silky smooth voice from Bastion to be your announcer. You can even get Rick and Morty to talk shit about the other team as you go on a rampage. Of all the heroes in the game, I think you're the most like this guy. What? What? Why? Because y you have no idea how to talk to women. And every year, Valve rakes in millions of dollars from players who buy these cosmetic items. After all, the announcer is, in many ways, just another form of cosmetic. A way to dress up an otherwise bland or repetitive voiceover. While the number of games that include purchasable announcers is pretty small at the moment, it's not unrealistic to see more and more freemium games adopt celebrity voiceovers over the next few years. Finally, we come full circle. The announcer has become such a staple of gaming that there are literally entire games built around the disembodied voice. One of the first games to utilize this idea was Portal back in 2007. The game features a silent protagonist named Chell and one other character, GLaDOS, the computer in charge of an abandoned test facility who blurs the lines between character and announcer. GLaDOS guides you through levels, antagonizes you, and really brings the game to life. While Portal would certainly have been a smash success with or without a sarcastic AI following your every move, I don't think the game would have the same kind of charm without her. And fast forward 10 years, and we reach the game that epitomizes the announcer as a key component of gameplay. Stanley Parable. Kevin Brighting narrates what is essentially a choose-your-own-adventure game. The narrator tells a story, while you, Stanley, have free reign to do whatever you want. You can follow their instructions and let the game run to its logical conclusion, or you can do literally anything else. You can go through the door on the right when you're told to, or you can go through the door on the left. When the narrator says go through the blue door, go through the red door if you want to. Heck, there's even a broom closet you can enter and just stand in driving the narrator insane for 10 straight minutes. You can hammer out the details, I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. In Stanley Parable, the announcer, narrator, voice of God, whatever you want to call them, is the game, and is often at direct odds with you, the player. It makes for a universally enjoyable experience, regardless of how you play the game, and is a cool meta take on the role of the game's announcer. From convincing you to spend money in arcades, to bringing virtual sports to life, to becoming the center point of narrative-driven games, the announcer is an integral part of the gaming world today. While every game and genre utilizes the announcer a little bit differently, we've all had experiences in gaming where we can recognize a certain voice, or where hearing a certain line of dialogue transports us back in time. For me, the voices of Jeff Steitzer and Dean Harrington are the voices that defined a big chunk of my childhood and accompany memories that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. And I know I'm not the only one. Nowadays, you can find guys like Jeff doing custom shoutouts on Cameo. Redditor.
Mommy Mill. Dean Harrington recorded voice lines for the Smash modding community. Zero Suit Samus. And while we might not play our favorite games as much as we used to, the voice of those iconic announcers will ring in our heads for generations to come. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on the video game announcer? What game, in your opinion, has the most iconic announcer? Let us know in the comments and make sure to argue with everyone else as to why they're wrong and you're right. My name's Jonah. See you next time. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list and shout out to B, Cloud, QB, Foxy, Pachana, Shampoo, Spartacus, and Yoshichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Marco for being our Diamond supporter. Thank you all and happy holidays. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah. Thanks for watching.